Hey love bugs, welcome back to Hanging with the White Folks. I mentioned last week in my video the um, Hourglass Vanish Foundation and I thought that it was absolutely beautiful. In that video I also shared with you the Hourglass Veil Translucent Setting Powder and I wanted to quickly give you just like a little review of my thoughts and what I think about this. I think this is an absolutely beautiful powder. It is gorgeous. I had the opportunity to wear it earlier this week. Y'all, when I tell you it, my skin was flawless. It was on point. I know someone mentioned um, when you go out into the sun, you can see particles or glitter particles. I wasn't standing out in the sun looking for glitter particles, but <laughs> you know, just shaking my head around looking for glitter particles. But I did not see that at all. And I looked in my mirror while I was driving, while I was in the sun. I didn't really see that, but all I did see was flawless skin. It is absolutely beautiful. And I even wore this underneath my eyes. And I mentioned last week, look at that guys. Isn't it, it is gorgeous. I mentioned last week that I do not put powder underneath. I don't set my eyes with powder because um, I look, I'm a little bit older. Certain powders just give that cakey, crepey look. And so I didn't set my powder with, um, my, set my foundation with powder, but I did this week. And let me tell y'all, I didn't have any creasing. I had no fine lines. I had no movement, like no shift of this powder, shifting my foundation, separating my foundation. It was just an absolutely gorgeous powder. And I work a 12 hour day. I didn't even blot a whole lot. I blotted right around my nose because I always get oilies right there. <laughs> and I blotted right there in like the middle of the day and I leave my house early in the morning and I get home late in the evening. By the time I took my makeup off at 10 o'clock that night, this powder kept my foundation flawless. My skin just looked luminous. It looked dewy, but not oily. I had coworkers who see me with foundation on or makeup on, on the regular. They asked, what did you do differently to your skin today? <laughs> and I had to share, I was like, oh, I picked up this new powder. It is beautiful, go and get your hands on it. The price point is a little bit high, but you know, it's comparable to most powders, I will say that, but it is definitely worth it. And look at the amount of product that you get in here. So this here holds 0.36 ounces and 10.5 grams of product. It's gonna take me forever to get through this packaging, okay? <laughs> and it's like, <laughs> look at that. Look how much comes out, just a little at a time. So you don't need much. You can even pour it into the cap or pour it you know, into a sifter or something like that, even though this does have a sifter. The holes look a little bit big. Oh, this powder is just gorgeous. So while we are here, I also mentioned in my video last week, my baby who came up, my son Stanton, I mentioned that he wasn't supposed to be here. So I'm gonna share with you just a little bit of a story because that was kind of a cliffhanger. That So I had my daughter Daphne in 2009. And I had Stanton in 2012, but in 2009, I had a tubal ligation done after I had a C-section with Daphne. If you don't know what a tubal ligation is, it's the, the common phrase is having a tube tied. So I had my tubes, my fallopian tubes tied, cut, and burned. So there was really no possible way aside from <laughs> the Lord <laughs> that I was going to have another child. But so fast forward three years after having Daphne and I was for weeks sick, 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 sick. I would wake up sick, I would go to bed sick. I thought I had cancer. I thought I was dying of some unknown disease. I was vomiting, I was nauseous, I had a fever, a headache, I just had everything. But what the one thing that I did say to my husband was, if I didn't have my tubes tied, I would really believe that I was pregnant. I had every symptom of pregnancy. Of course, no one believed me, including my doctor. But I believe, I do go to the doctor, the doctor tells me, you know, I'm gonna put you on a hormone because I wasn't getting a menstrual at this point either, but I had also lost a lot of weight. So 
we just attribute it to my weight loss um, and my hormones just changing, things like that. So he put me on the hormone and told me to come back in a week. I went home, took the hormone. I went home still uncertain, still feeling uneasy. I was not satisfied with the response that was given to me. Probably one of the reasons why is because he was a male and I kind of felt like he didn't understand my body and what I was going through, even though he was a doctor. I took the hormones for a few days and nothing happened. I didn't get a menstrual, so I stopped taking the hormones and I went and got me a pregnancy test, y'all. <laughs> well, that pregnancy test came back positive. I was in such disbelief that I went and got five more pregnancy tests and each pregnancy test came back positive again. I called my husband and I'm like, babe, uh, we're having another baby. <laughs> no, we're not, you know, you can't get pregnant. Yeah, my, I've taken five pregnancy tests and they all say that I'm pregnant. Well, that could be an error, you know, they could be old tests, all excuse under the book, simply because we were told one thing and here was something different was happening. Well, when you go and get your tubes tied and you have that procedure done, they make you sign some paperwork. So beware of the paperwork that you always sign to, whether it's for a house closing, a baby delivery, and car note, anything like that. Beware of what you are signing always. So I signed paperwork or clause that said that there is a 0.1% chance of conceiving a child after having a tubal ligation. Well, y'all, let me just tell you, I'm the 0.1%, okay? Because I can't even sue anybody for having my baby. But do you really want to sue after you've been blessed with such a miracle like that? No. I mean, I didn't go back to the other doctor. I did make an appointment with a new uh, OBGYN. So she explained to me that yes, there's a possibility of you getting pregnant. There's also a possibility to, that that is an ectopic pregnancy. For those of you that do not know, an ectopic pregnancy is when the egg implants itself into the fallopian tubes and there is nowhere for it to go at this point. It would be in dire pain. Um, you could also bleed. It could burst in the fallopian tube and uh, you know, death is a cause of ectopic pregnancies as well. Infection, all kinds of different things. So I geared myself up with tears, you know, to the fact that this could possibly be not a real pregnancy or it is a pregnancy that's not gonna go to term. So she did do an, um, an ultrasound and it was five minutes of silence, which was deafening, but those five minutes also felt like five years. <laughs> and finally she said, Oh my goodness, exact words. Oh my goodness, there's a baby in there. Oh wow, wow, and it's a viable baby in the right location. Oh my goodness, so now my tears of sadness or what would be sadness are now tears of joy. She goes and she sends me downstairs to the high risk center and they confirm yet again that yes, I am having a baby. <laughs> three years after having a tubal ligation. So folks, if someone tells you that what you believe about your body is not accurate, get a second opinion, get a third opinion, get a fourth opinion, you get however many opinions it takes for you to feel satisfied with that response because doctors are doctors. They go to school to learn to be a medical professional. They are not inside of your body. <laughs> no, you know, if you believe one thing and someone is telling you something other, you have the power to negate that and get some more research until you are satisfied with that response at that point. So, and that's what I did. And here we are today, my baby is beautiful. He's about to be seven. He's full of life, he's full of joy. We've had no issues, no medical problems with him. He's just, He's my little miracle, and in no way do I share this to um, make someone's journey uh, less than or, or demeaning or anything like that. I know there are plenty of mamas who struggle with fertility, and I just share this because he's my little miracle. We all have our own little miracles, so I wanted to share in case there is someone out there that is not certain about whether or not they're actually pregnant after a tuba, or if they can get pregnant after a tuba, Honey, you can get pregnant after a tube, okay? Use that protection, ma'am. <laughs> anyway, in closing, with this 
powder I wanted to also share really quickly because I'm in love with Hourglass. This is the Veil Mineral Primer and if you can see that I'm like almost on E with this primer because that's how much I love it. These two together are the perfect little skincare fix. It will have your foundation looking like boom, bow, bow. What's going on with your skin? What have you done differently with your skincare? Nothing, I've just added this to my routine. It is gorgeous. Go and get your hands on both of these. Both of them are worth the price point. They're both at Sephora. They're not at Ulta. They're both at Sephora. Sephora.com or Sephora in store. I hope you enjoyed this video. Hope it's been helpful and informative because that is what I would love to share. Just being informative, giving a word of encouragement and talking about beauty products, which I love. So I hope you tune in next week. Thank y'all for coming back to Hanging with the White Folks. Y'all, bye.